What we're going to talk about now is simply some keys to self-motivation. And all of us have motivation of some sort. I define motivation as the desire to achieve that which you believe to be worthwhile. And many people go through life never getting in touch with their greatness because of the lack of motivation to push themselves or because they have not found something that they believe to be worthwhile to challenge them. I heard a poem once that said, um, many a flower has bloomed unceasingly and wasted sweetness upon the cold desert air. It's translated that means simply that many a talented persons have gone unnoticed and the world never had a chance to be exposed to their talent because that person did not take the time to begin to express or to demonstrate or to motivate themselves in the direction to bring that which they came into the universe to bring. How can you measure your motivation? How can you evaluate where you are on a scale of one to 10? Let's do this for ourselves mentally. How do you rate yourself from one to 10? Your mental attitude about yourself, how you feel about you, how you feel about life. How do you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of your physical appearance, in terms of your health? Do you take care of yourself? Are you allowing yourself to get overweight and out of shape? Are you conscious of your health? Are you watching the food that you take into your body? Do you make a deliberate effort to exercise? You know, it was George Burns. He said, we cannot help getting older, but we don't have to get old. And many of us get old before our time because we don't take time to take care of ourselves. Your environment is a very good indicator. On a scale of one to 10, is it what you want it to be? Do you find it desirable? Are you satisfied? The job or career that you're involved in. Someone said that 85% of the American public unhappy with their jobs. Are you spending eight hours a day just doing time? Doing something that you don't find challenging, that does not make you stretch mentally, that does not stimulate you, that does not inspire you. Something that you don't find a sense of fulfillment in it. If you're doing that day in and day out, it has to affect how you feel about yourself, your level of motivation. Your relationships. What kind of impact is it having on your life? Is it nourishing or is it a toxic relationship? Does it drain you or does it build you up? Ask yourself that. How motivated are you to do something about it? Your contribution, your actions. What are you giving? Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here. And in fact, under their name, we could put under there, not used up. <laughs> will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will you leave? What will be different? because you came this way. Someone once said that life is our gift to us that God has given us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. What kind of gift are you formulating? Is this a gift that you like to take back and do something else before you turn it in? Think about that. What can we do? What are some of the keys that we can begin to use to motivate ourselves when our batteries run low? Because I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, at some time you are going to get tired. At some time you're going to get in a rut, seem like nothing you do works out right. At some times it just seems like you just don't have the wherewithal or the will to do anything. That sometimes you act like you're punch drunk, you're just wading through life, just doing time day in and day out, looking at non-discriminatory television, anything that's on, just looking. And depress, feeling powerless, feeling useless, and bored. What do you do? How do you get yourself out of a rut? How do you, when you know you can do more than what you've been doing and you're not doing it and you're discontent with where you are, you get angry at yourself. How do you get out of that rut? How do you motivate yourself? One of the things that we must do 
is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can't be anything but a dog. A tree can't be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire you and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. You want to control the spirit of your day. When you first wake up in the morning, your mind is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. That's when the subconscious mind is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes when you wake up, that will affect the spirit of your day. When you listen to tapes, listen with relaxed belief. Believing that this can happen for you. And by listening to them, listen to them over and over and over again. And you will get a breakthrough. You can listen to the same tape for months and all of a sudden you hear something you never heard before. It have a special meaning for you. Or read the same book over again and you find some special insight. You said, I can't believe I didn't see that the first time. So you want to be involved in developing yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people won't take that kind of effort and invest that kind of energy in themselves because they will fall prey to that conversation within. Oh, don't do that. You don't have time. You're too busy. You're too caught up in the rat race. Most people won't do that. Well, they won't take time to go to lectures. They won't take time to go to seminars. They won't take time to, to go to classes to improve themselves. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery and you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life, your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself because if you don't, I guarantee you that you will make a settlement and most people have and most of us already have. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? You know when we make settlements, out-of-court settlements, you've heard them? That means that you decided to take something less than what you originally wanted to get had you gone into court. And the reason that you settled outside of court is because you didn't believe that you can get it. So you made an out-of-court settlement. Many of us are making in-life settlement. We're settling for less than what we actually deserve. We don't feel good about it, but we make it work in our minds. We'll come up with some kind of excuse to make it all right. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? Many of us settle for less than what we want out of relationships because we don't have the courage to change them. I had a seminar I used to do called, Are You Living Together or Dying Together? <laughs> Many people are just dying together. Gladys Knight used to have a song that says, Neither one of us want to be the first to say goodbye. The next thing is, in order to begin to find some keys to self-motivation to drive yourself, in addition to working on yourself, and as you work on yourself, you feel good about yourself, and as you feel better about yourself, you treat yourself differently, develop a health plan. See, you can't feel well and do well if you don't have good health. You can't perform if you don't have your health. Your health is valuable. Develop a health plan. A plan that you will follow because this is the only vehicle that you have to carry you through this experience called life. And you want to take good care of it because you love you enough. You care enough about you. And that's not easy. It is not easy having a health plan and sticking to it. But you're worth it doing it again and again and again. I have lost 22 pounds several times. It, it, I always do it. I love potato chips. People who know me know I love M&M peanuts. I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I love my mother's sweet potato pie. I love this. It's not always on my health plan, but I put it on there sometimes. <laughs> I said, life is too short to go without sweet potato pie. <laughs> 
If I go tonight, I want you to slip a slice of sweet potato pie in my casket. <laughs> and watch the smile on my face. <laughs> Next thing is, as you take care of yourself, the next key is, keys to motivation, to self-motivation. You want to live life with energy and passion. You want to make a conscious effort to be lively. See, in life, you either saying hello or goodbye. You either on the way or in the way. <laughs> Leave dead people alone. Some folks just walking around looking sad. How you doing, honey? <laughs> Stay away from these people. Just go away from them. It affects you. You want to smile. You want to be happy. You got a lot to be thankful for. But you watch some of the faces around you every day. And I tell you, some of these faces, they will put you in a depressed state of mind. So you want to avoid these kind of faces. When you see them coming, turn your head. <laughs> Next thing is that you want to monitor your inner conversations. The things that you say to yourself. You want to watch them, and in watching them, you want to take charge. A friend of mine told me this evening, and she did it excellently. She said, I didn't want to come tonight. I was feeling so depressed. And I said, I'm going anyhow. See, that was the conversation. Say, oh, you really don't feel like it. You really don't need to do it. You don't really need to read anything. Forget all that. That's that inner conversation. Oh, you don't need to worry about trying to go into your own business. Forget that. You can't do that. What if you lose everything you've got? That inner conversation that stops you from doing the things you want to do less, don't do that. How can you possibly think about being a motivational speaker? You don't have the contacts, you don't have the money, you don't know the right people, you're gonna get up there and your mind's gonna go blank? Forget all that. You remember that time you got up before some people and you panicked, you stood up and your mind sat down, don't you remember? And I said, yes. And then I said, shut up! So you've got to learn to stand up to yourself inside yourself and short circuit, override that conversation that's always going on. 85% of what that conversation will tell you is negative. It's negative. It will tell you you're tired when you really are not tired. It will tell you you can't do it. It will fill you with fear. So you've got to watch that conversation. And when you find it going on, you've got to stand up to it and say, I'm going to do this anyhow. I'm afraid, but I'm afraid not to do it. And I'm not going to let you stop me. The biggest challenge that you will have in life is you. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. The next thing that is a key to self-motivation is that you've got to ask yourself, what do I want out of life? What do you want out of life? What do you want out of a job? What do you want out of a career? What do you want out of a relationship? What do you want? What gives you your life? What, how will you know when you got it? What will make you happy? You need to know. You need to start asking yourself some questions. What do I really, really, truly want? You need to be exact about that. Don't be vague. Oh, I just want to be happy. That's too vague. What will make you happy? How will you know when you got it? Zero in on it. Be exact. Be specific. And as you do that, that will stimulate that superconscious mind or the reticular activating system of your mind that will begin to find those things, to identify with it. And once you begin to determine that which you want, take the time to write it down. Don't just think about it, write it down. That is a subjective process that engages the subconscious mind. Write it down. Once you write it down, read it three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Why is that important? Because what it will do, it will cause you to focus. It will cause you to concentrate. When that other conversation is going on telling you what you cannot do, 
telling you all of the impossibilities and all of the obstacles, your concentrating will begin to create a larger vision within yourself and you start looking for and seeing some new opportunities. You start creating some openings for yourself. As you begin to read that every day, every day, day in and day out, that will make you focus. That will discipline your thinking. And you'll get all kind of creative ideas. As I talk to you right now, being involved in this immersion process, you're going to create some openings for yourself. You're going to get some ideas. You're going to feel your adrenaline flowing, and you're going to think about something, some idea you had. You say, I want to go back, and I'm going to look at that again from a different vantage point, not from the level of the problem or the obstacles that I encountered, but from a higher vantage point. Because what you will begin to see and to know as I talk to the higher consciousness within you, that you are powerful, that you are a miracle worker. And that inner conversation has conditioned you to believe that you are not. And as you begin to discover the truth of who you are, whatever challenge that you're facing in life, and if you're living, you're facing some challenge. You'll begin to know that you're powerful and that you're a miracle maker. So as you begin to write down exactly what it is that you want, read it every day. The next thing is, see yourself there. How will you feel once you get there? What will the experience be like for you? What will be different? What kind of person do you have to become in order to get there? Visualize yourself there, living the experience. I remember when I ran for state representative in Columbus, Ohio, and I had a lot of people telling me, and you gotta watch not only the conversation within, but the conversation without. <laughs> telling me, Les, you can't possibly win, you can't do that. And I went down to the legislature, and I saw myself, I knew what I wanted. I saw myself in the chair, I pointed out the chair that I wanted. I used to go and sit up in the galleries and watch the legislative process. I used to go to the committee meetings and listen to legislation being introduced. I learned how to write legislation, how to amend legislation. I started thinking like a legislator, got up every day dressing, thinking like that, selling myself on it, seeing myself in the legislature. Mr. Speaker, I'm the gentleman from the 29th House District. I'd like to introduce a bill. I went in the legislature, walked around. I had the experience of it. And when I ran and won against overwhelming odds, they were shocked. I won the election even before it was held because I was living it in my mind. You want to see yourself beyond your circumstances. You got a challenge, see yourself beyond your challenge. See yourself with the challenge already resolved. And knowing that all is well, seeing yourself in control and in charge of your destiny, being healthy and happy. The next thing is, it is important in the area of motivating yourself, it's important to know why you're doing it. Because that mind will say, why bother? Why go through all this? This is too hard. No, throw in the tower. It's not worth it. Has it ever said that to you before? Here's how you can handle that. Here's how you override that. Write down five reasons why you deserve it. Why do you deserve what you want? Why you? Why do you deserve it? What meaning and value will it bring to your life? What's so different about you that you deserve your goal or this goal? And when you write down those five reasons, when you have some down moments and you're going to have them, when that conversation starts talking to you and it's going to talk to you, what you will do is you can pull that out and read it and it will build you up. It will be your rod and your staff to comfort you through some challenging moments because you're gonna have some. Life will knock you between the eyes. It will catch you on the blind side, come out of nowhere, stuff you can't anticipate. That will knock the wind out of you. You wanna give up. That's why it's important for you to work on yourself, listening to tapes, building yourself up, talking to yourself with power, feeling, and conviction, building yourself up day in and day out because it's coming. <laughs> I guarantee you. Life is just waiting. Oh, he's doing good now, huh? Very good. I remember I had an experience. I was pursuing my dream. And that's why you have to work on yourself. You don't know what's going to happen. And I was telling people, I had this big rally I had to do with 5,000 people there. And I said, you must work on yourself. If you want a larger vision, you've got to empower yourself continuously. Because life will catch you on the blind side. 
And after I finished my speech, I got a rousing standing ovation. And I went and called the young lady that I was dating at the time. I said, hey, guess what? I said, they love me. I got a standing ovation. And they were chanting, we want the motivator. We want the motivator. I said, listen, we want the motivator. We want, do you hear? She said, yes, Les, I need to talk to you. I said, well, wait a minute. You talking about tough. I was getting it off and I'll be home soon. Les, I heard a voice in the background. Hurry up and tell him. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Les, um, you've been gone a lot and there's somebody else. What? And they came in. Les, come on, Mr. Motivator. They want you back out there. Wait a minute, hold a minute, hold a minute. What'd you say? I'm sorry, there's someone else. And I heard the voice say, hang the phone up. Clump. I say, wait a minute. I say, hey, hey, Motivator, come on. They want you. Can't you hear them cheering? I say, oh, 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 okay. Oh, I say, I say, oh, when you working on a larger vision, I say, you... You got to really work on yourself because life will catch you on the blind side. I said, you better be ready. And you better make sure you want it because it'll make you cry. And somebody said, the spirit is on him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. (laughs) I was talking till it started blinking the lights. They had to come pull me off, and I said, you got to have a larger vision. You make sure, wait a minute, you make sure you work on yourself. They said, come on, Mr. Brown, come on. Yeah. I went back to my hotel room, and loneliness and heartbreak was sitting on the bed and said, are you coming in now? <laughs> Do you have your larger vision now? <laughs> How's your positive attitude? <laughs> say, get on in here. <laughs> are you still breathing? Shut, shut up. <laughs> no, you want your gold? No, I don't want this gold. No, I don't. <laughs> Life will wear you out. You'll be saying, no, I can't. And no, I won't. <laughs> you try to read it, can't see nothing through the tears. <laughs> I went plundering through the drawers in this hotel trying to find a Gideon Bible, anything, you know. <laughs> I said, somebody, anybody help me. Yahweh, Yahoo, anybody. So <laughs> Boy, I tell you. That's why you got to work on yourself. Because life will send you some curves you cannot anticipate. The next thing is that whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you could be. That you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. The other thing that's the key to self-motivation is recognize the fact that you're going to get into some slumps recognize the fact that you're going to encounter a great deal of failure in life. It goes with the territory. But in the face of that, you want to be relentless. And when you want something, you don't expect everybody to say, oh, come on in, we've been, oh, you want this? Oh, great, we want to give this to you. You're such a nice person. You're doing it for your family, aren't you? Great. No, no, life isn't like that. No, many doors will be closed in your face. Many loans that you will want. And they'll say, no, you don't have enough collateral. You don't have enough credit. And most people will give up. But you've got to decide that I'm going to be fearless. I refuse to be denied. And I'm going to go all out. I'm going to be relentless. I don't care how many no's I encounter. I like something Isaiah Thomas said when he's getting ready for a basketball game. He said, I'm going to either shoot us in or shoot us out but I'm not going to not do anything. And that's the way to go. You can't make a basket unless you shoot the ball. You can't hit a home run unless you take a swing at it. Most people won't even take a swing. Well, I probably won't make it anyhow. That's the conversation within. They probably won't give it to me anyhow. If you want something, 
You've got to be relentless. You've got to decide, I deserve this and I'm going to have it. And you go all out to get it. That drives you. The next thing is that when you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, as soon as I pay my bills, or as soon as I get my divorce, all kind, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can where you are with what you have and never be satisfied. A lot of people never take a chance in life. They don't want to take any chances. They want the situation to be ideal. See, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by sight. If I can see it, I'll do it. No, 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 no. A lot of people say, if I can see it, I'll believe it. No, 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 no. If you believe it, you can see it. And don't be disturbed because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. That's part of being unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you're like Paul who said, you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. That's part of being unreasonable. Most people won't do that. Most people say, call me when you get it together. <laughs> then I'll support you. <laughs> the other thing is that one of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision, part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. Say, I can't afford to give anything. You can't afford not to give. Give your time. Give your talent. There's nothing just to go over and lick envelopes. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going over there. It's part of my tithing in the universe. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You'll go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you. When you go in, they'll say, hey, that's somebody important. I want to know who you are. I just want to be near you. That energy that you have, that consciousness that you will embody will affect everybody around you. The next thing is, is that you want to create a home court advantage for yourself. You've got to be aware of who you have around you. So you want to be selective. Have friends that will enable you to grow. I have friends that help me to grow spiritually. These are my spiritual friends. I talk spiritual stuff with them. I have some other friends who are just intellectual friends. They make me grow intellectually. They make me stretch. I have some professional friends. I'm a member of the National Speakers Association. I get together with other speakers and we learn from each other and we grow from each other. I have other friends who are just social friends. All we do is just socialize together. We'll look at a basketball game together or go out dancing, but that's all we can do. We don't talk anything serious, nothing spiritual, nothing intellectual. That's not that kind of relationship. <laughs> nothing heavy up in here. <laughs> have other friends, we walk together. That's all we can do, walk together. Talk about we're gonna lose weight one day by and by for good, all right? That's all we do, nothing else. So according to the relationships that you develop. We grow from people and projects. And the relationships that you develop can enhance and can enrich your life or they can drain you. I know many talented people who had a great deal of potential but because they didn't surround themselves 
with other people that will inspire them to transcend themselves. They never realize their greatness and they will end up going to their grave with all their good stuff still in them. So you want to look at your relationships, the people that you're involved with, the people that you communicate with all, most often, and you want to ask yourself the question, what am I becoming because of this relationship? Does it inspire me? Am I motivated? Am I encouraged? Am I driven to develop myself? Am I seeking my own greatness? What kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I becoming more cynical and negative about life? Ask yourself that. The next thing is, you've got to say yes to your life. You've got to say yes. Yes to my dreams. Yes to me. Yes. I can make it. Yes, I can. Doesn't matter how many failures I've made. Doesn't matter how many mistakes I've endured. Doesn't matter about my defeats. Doesn't matter about what I've done. Yes. Yes. I don't care about the fact I'm in a hole now. Doesn't matter about where I am. Yes. The last chapter to my life has not been written yet. If you judge me now, you'll judge me prematurely. I haven't exposed all my stuff yet. I'm still in the process of transforming my life. I'm still in the process of becoming. Yes. I had somebody in my life at one time told me, you'll never make it. And I said, I'll show you. And, I, and what energized me, what motivated me was something that Frank Sinatra said. He said, the best revenge is massive success. I'll show you. You just watch my smoke, as old folks used to say. So say yes. Stand up for your dreams. Stand up for what you want in your life. Decide that your life is so meaningful to you. That you love you and you love life so much that you're going to stand up for something you want. I used to have a saying when I was on the radio, stand up for what you believe in because you can fall for anything. So what I say to you this evening, that you are powerful. You have miracle working power in your life right now. But you've got to work on yourself. You've got to develop yourself. You've got to talk to yourself day in and day out. Selling yourself on you and on your potentials. And you've got to know that, that you are worth all of your effort. And that the key to your motivation as you get a larger vision of yourself is to know that you have something to give is to know that you have a reason for being in the universe at this point in time. I want you to stand up for your life right now. Anybody want to stand up for your life? Stand up for your dream? Stand up for your dream! What we're going to talk about now is simply some keys to self-motivation. And all of us have motivation of some sort. I define motivation as the desire to achieve that which you believe to be worthwhile. And many people go through life never getting in touch with their greatness because of the lack of motivation to push themselves or because and in fact, under their name, we could put under there, not used up. <laughs> will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will you leave? What will be different because you came this way? Someone once said that life is our gift to us 
that God has given us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. What kind of gift are you formulating? Is this a gift that you like to take back and do something else before you turn it in? Think about that. What can we do? What are some of the keys that we can begin to use to motivate ourselves when our batteries run low? Because I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, at some time you are going to get tired. At some time you're going to they have not found something that they believe to be worthwhile to challenge them. I heard a poem once that said, um, many a flower has bloomed unceasingly and wasted sweetness upon the cold desert air. It's translated that means simply that many a talented persons have gone unnoticed and the world never had a chance to be exposed to their talent because that person did not take the time to begin to express or to demonstrate or to motivate themselves in the direction to bring that which they came into the universe to bring. How can you measure your motivation? How can you evaluate where you are on a scale of one to 10? Let's do this for ourselves mentally. How do you rate yourself from one to 10? Your mental attitude about yourself, how you feel about you, how you feel about life. How do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in terms of your physical appearance? in terms of your health? Do you take care of yourself? Are you allowing yourself to get overweight and out of shape? Are you conscious of your health? Are you watching the food that you take into your body? Do you make a deliberate effort to exercise? You know, it was George Burns, he said, we cannot help getting older, but we don't have to get old. And many of us get old before our time because we don't take time to take care of ourselves. Your environment is a very good indicator. On a scale of one to 10, is it what you want it to be? Do you find it desirable? Are you satisfied? The job or career that you're involved in. Someone said that 85% of the American public unhappy with their jobs. Are you spending eight hours a day just doing time? Doing something that you don't find challenging, that does not make you stretch mentally, that does not stimulate you, that does not inspire you. Something that you don't find a sense of fulfillment in it. If you're doing that day in and day out, it has to affect how you feel about yourself, your level of motivation, your relationships. What kind of impact is it having on your life? Is it nourishing or is it a toxic relationship? Does it drain you or does it build you up? Ask yourself that. How motivated are you to do something about it? Your contribution, your actions. What are you giving? Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here.